Okay, here is a video that I believe we should see. Okay, we have here um, two people obviously speaking in French. Uh, the one is a French journalist and the other one is a politician from Russia. And what he's saying here very clearly says, if France dares to send people, to send soldiers in Ukraine, they're going to finish them. And he's very bold. I mean, surely you don't understand French. Okay, m most of us don't. But just look at his facial expression. Look at the aggression with what he's saying, what he's saying. If France dares to send soldiers in Ukraine, none of them will come out alive. He said, we're going to finish them all. Listen to this. On va tuer tous les soldats français qui vont venir au sol ukrainien. Tous. Vous vous foutez de ce que dit Emmanuel Macron Exactement. Et quand il vous dit qu'il est prêt, éventuellement, à ne pas se fixer de limites on s'en fout de ses limites, on s'en fout de Macron, de ce qu'il dit Macron, on s'en fout de limites de Macron et on va tuer... La France reste une puissance nucléaire, Tout à vous l'avez en tête. Tout à fait, avec 200 missiles. Euh, et donc on va, on va tuer tous les soldats français qui vont venir au sol ukrainien. Tous. Parce qu'aujourd'hui, il y en a, durant le conflit en Ukraine, 13 000 mercenaires, dont 367 Français et dont 147 ont déjà tué. Donc il y en a 147 citoyens de la France qui ont été tués en Ukraine. Et on va tuer tout le monde. Vous inquiétez pas. This man says very clearly, we don't care. The literal translation is we don't give a, about what Macron feels. We're going to suppress them. We're going to finish them if he dares to do that. So why are they talking about this? Because Emmanuel Macron, I think we spoke about this a few days ago, made a speech, a very aggressive speech, speaking to his people. He said their goal is very simple. They should make sure Russia doesn't even believe that they can win this war. There is no consensus right now about sending in ground troops in an official, endorsed and sanctioned manner. But in reality, nothing should be ruled out. We will do whatever it takes to ensure that Russia cannot win this war. So, I mean, fellas, I thought Russia had issues with Ukraine. I I'm very surprised to see it looks like Russia has problems with France. I, I don't know when last it Russians and French people f fight. I mean, I, I know with Napoleon, like many, many, many years ago, they had some stories, but that that's long. That's hundreds of years ago. When did the French and the Russians become enemies? That that's a good question. That really deserve an answer. Now, Putin believes the answer is very simple. The answer is the influence of France in Africa is being very quickly dimmed out. Meaning many African countries that used to cooperate with France do not want them anymore. They're preferring Russia over France. And that's the reason why France is fighting very hard, being very aggressive, encouraging other European countries to send weapons and soldiers and personnel to go fight Russians in Ukraine. So listen to this man again. Vous vous foutez de ce que dit Emmanuel Macron Exactement. Et quand il vous dit qu'il est prêt, éventuellement, à ne pas se fixer de limites On s'en fout de ses limites. On s'en fout de Macron, de ce qu'il dit Macron. On s'en fout de limites de Macron. Et on va tuer... La France reste une puissance nucléaire. Tout à vous l'avez en tête. Tout à fait, avec 200 missiles. Euh, et donc, on va, on va tuer tous les soldats français qui vont venir au sol ukrainien. Very aggressive. He's not afraid. And let me tell you, fellas, um, people who have experienced Russians before, if you have been to Moscow before, you know, these guys are very tough people. And somebody was saying, if ever the world has to go through a world war without any weapons, these people are certainly going to win. The <laughs> they're certainly going to win the world war because they're very tough, very traditional. Men kept their manhood the way they were born. They play fight. They, yeah, you play basketball, they play fight. So fighting is part of the culture. They're very tough, very strong people. And another comment they're making is they are not afraid of French because according to them, French are already in Ukraine and they are being finished every single day. Putin said many of these Western nations pretend not to be in Ukraine. In reality, we hear them speak French and English in Ukraine. Les militaires de l'OTAN sont présents en Ukraine, nous le savons. On entend parler français et anglais sur place. Il n'y a rien de bon là-dedans. They're not supposed to be speaking French and English. They are Ukrainians. But they are being finished. So we're not afraid. There's nothing new they're going to bring. Now listen to this man downplayed the French nuclear weapon. The journalist said, 
But France is a very powerful nuclear country. He said, yeah, we know they have 200 nuclear weapons. On, on s'en fout de limite de Macron et on va tuer... La France reste une puissance nucléaire. Tout à Vous l'avez en tête. Tout à fait, avec 200 missiles. <laughs> very, very funny. In fact, by saying that, he's emphasizing the power of Russia. Because Russia is the biggest nuclear power in the world. They have lots more than China and America. And also, they have the best technology in nuclear weapons that many other countries don't have yet at this point. Now, again, I want you to watch the second video. The second video is a video of a young, supposedly French man, French soldier, who's very angry at his president. And what he's saying is, I'm not going to go to war. I don't want to go to war. I'm not going to a war that's going to benefit politicians while we're giving off our blood. You know, it's very interesting. Listen to this guy. Emmanuel Macron et tout votre petit gouvernement de merde. Vous pourrez rentrer en guerre si vous voulez. Et si le risque, c'est de se finir en prison pour euh, avoir refusé d'obéir aux ordres, bah, je finirai en prison. Mais il est hors de question. Hors de question que je prenne un flingue et que j'aille tuer des gens pour vos intérêts personnels et pour vos intérêts financiers. Il est hors de question que je fasse participer des gens que je connais en leur donnant des informations qui leur laisseraient penser que tout ça a un intérêt positif. Vous êtes en train de mettre en danger des gens partout dans le monde. Vous allez faire en sorte que des gens meurent partout dans le monde à cause de vos conneries. Et le dernier petit message que je voulais faire passer ce soir, parce que je suis, je suis impressionné à quel point les gens deviennent cons, aujourd'hui les gens sont en train de se demander si Aya Nakamura va chanter Edith Piaf, si euh, les gens vont nager dans la Seine, si vous allez, pour ceux qui habitent à Paris, être confiné comme pendant le... vous allez avoir un QR code à présenter, des auto-attestations comme des bons chiens-chiens alors que vous êtes chez vous. On est en train de virer des jeunes de leur euh, logement étudiant. On les fout à la rue. On leur dit que euh, on dit à des à des, à des... You can see the man is not very happy at all. Okay, look, look how red he's become. He's very passionate about what he's saying. I mean, you don't know what this guy's going through. Maybe he's got the family or he's planning to get married. And all of a sudden, you want to force him to go fight to fight. He doesn't even understand. He doesn't know the cause. He's not benefiting from. I mean, France is not at war with Russia. Why do you want to send people go die for, like, what for? And this reminds me of Muhammad Ali. Okay, Muhammad Ali, for those of you who don't know, refused to be deployed to Vietnam. Yeah. It has been said that I have two alternatives. Either go to jail or go to the army. But I would like to say that there is another alternative. In the 1960s, the USA and Vietnam were at war. We don't know why. You know, it's always that same story. Uh, we're going to come teach you democracy. We're going to come teach you how to live, how to be. And Vietnamese were not about that life. Okay, they didn't have the weapons and the bombs and the stuff, but they had big heart and big brains. They created traps and all sorts of stuff. And they created terror in their land. They were not walk over. So America was recruiting young people to send them to Vietnam to go and fight. And they came to Muhammad Ali. He was already a boxing champion at the time. He refused to go. He said, I'm not going. These people have never called me the N-word. These Vietnamese people you're asking me to go fight now have never called me the N-word. I've never, I have no problem with them. I know who my enemies are. It's not them. Are uh, some darker people, are uh, some poor hungry people in the mud for big powerful America and shoot them for what? They never call me n They never lynch me. They never put no dogs on me. They never rob me of my nationality, rape and kill my mother and father. Well, I'm going to shoot them for what? How can I go shoot them? Them little poor little black people, little babies and children and women. How can I shoot them poor people? I would just take me to jail. And he was talking about something very interesting. Let me just remind you here that Muhammad Ali was a winner of the Olympics, okay? After going to the Olympics and winning a medal, he came back to his country hoping to be treated special because, after all, even though you black, because at the time, blacks and whites never mingled. There was restaurant for white people, restaurant for black people, toilet for white people, toilet for black people. Some of the times, blacks and whites could not use the same buses together. And Ali went to a venue where he expected to be treated as an Olympian. They asked him to leave, to go out. They kicked him out because he was black. And he was very touched and hurt about that. So I said, well, I get my Olympic gold medal, then I'll go in. I went and got my gold medal, went back in, ordered two cheeseburgers, and they said, sorry, we, we don't serve Negroes. I said, I don't eat them either, just give me two cheeseburgers. And she said, you're getting smart. She called the manager, and he said something about, I don't care who he is. She said, Scatch is late. I don't care who he is. Anyway, 
But I couldn't. The idea was I couldn't eat that, so I got so angry. Muhammad Ali, whose name in the past was Cassius Clay, changed his name because he wanted to have some sort of a originality, authenticity. He felt like Cassius Clay was a slave's name. And he didn't want to be a slave, at least in his mind. So Muhammad Ali refused to go to war for America, even though he was a champion. And he went through a very difficult financial time. He couldn't fight anymore. They took his belt away. He had no promotion, nothing happening for him. And it's Joe Frazier, the man who was the most ruthless of his opponents, that supported him financially for a moment. Yes, Muhammad Ali's biggest opponent supported him financially when he was going through a difficult time with the state. My question is, I know Muhammad Ali is way bigger than this man, but is this the same spirit when you decide finally, I think I know who my enemies are and I am not going to die in a war that does not concern me. It's none of my business and I don't know who's making money out of this because yeah, duh, some people are making money out of this. This man refused. Let me know how you feel about this. What's interesting is uh, I hope nothing really bad happens to him because uh, yeah, what he did looks like nothing, but it's not nothing. God bless.